friends welcome back to Trout crafting in this video we are going to be looking at what the richlet conditions these are the conditions right that must exist in a periodic signal right for it to be analyzed using Fourier so if we have a signal right which we deem to be periodic even though we deem it to be periodic it has to make these conditions called the Richlet conditions for we to apply Fourier series to that signal. As we discussed in the previous video, whereby we'll talk about Fourier series in general, we demystify, we'll demystify Fourier series. We discuss about these conditions, right? I will discuss briefly about the condition. And in this video, we're going to be looking at that. The first thing here is that a periodic signal, as we said, right, can be analyzed using Fourier series. In general while a non-periodic signal can be analyzed using what we call Fourier transform this Fourier transform is another technique that the um, Fourier developed in order to deal with signals that are not periodic right that are periodic but for the, for uh, for periodic signal we use what we call Fourier series now the main point of um, bone of contention here is that not all periodic signal have a Fourier series expansion not all, not all periodic signal can have a Fourier series expansion. So in essence, there must be a condition to say, okay, we have to analyze if for a way to use a Fourier series uh, on a periodic signal, it has to meet this certain condition, right? Because we said previously that a periodic signal can be analyzed using Fourier series, but it's just kind of we are generalizing it. But no, not all periodic signal can be what? Analyzed using Fourier series right so there must be a condition and the condition as you said is called what the richlet condition it's just three conditions let's look at what the conditions are the first condition here is that the periodic signal the periodic signal we are talking about in question right should have a finite number of maxima and minima over the range of time period what is this maxima and minima is what we mean looking at this signal right this is kind of like is it square to like a, tri a triangular signal right if you look at this signal if we look at this triangular signal we can see that in a full cycle let's assume here is a full cycle from zero to let's say pi or two pi is a full cycle right let's assume here is pi right you can see that the value here is zero at this point we have a maximum value so within a range of a period of a time period we have what finite number that means it's something that it's kind of like you know going to infinity we can assume that it's just two here right and the maximum of one so what let's pick another word range of point looking at from peak to peak let's use peak to peak and as you can see from peak to peak we have like two peak one minimum so like two maxima one minimum so that's just the basic concept behind it like you must have a finite number of maxima and minimum over the range of time period right as you can see it is maxima and minima looking at this signal we can see that it is varying so it's not kind of constant so let's assume this is a, 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 a whole time period right as you can see it is changing the maxima minima over the range is changing it is not finite kind of it is changing and that's how it tends to infinity if you look at the signal right it's not finite in a sense you see it has different maxima and minima with what different period teeth the main concept about the first condition is that you must know that for the signal, which is periodic signal, for it to what, yeah, uh, to meet the, the Richelieu condition, it must have a finite number of maxima and minima. And here's a basic conceptual um, visual representation of that, right? Let's look at the second condition. And the second condition is this. It says, right, the periodic signal should be absolutely integrable. Over a period of time, right? So we'll look at this a function, let's say f of t, it must be absolutely integrable over a period of what time and has to be less than infinity. This is the most important point here. It has to be less than infinity. It's not like it's, it's you can just be integrating into infinity. No, it has to be what integrable over a range of period of time, right? Look at this. This is a periodic signal, right? So if you can integrate it, look at the, uh, for the area over a range of period of time then we can say that is a periodic signal which kind of falls under the condition of the original and it's satisfying the second condition 
we're looking at this this is kind of like a time function like a complex function right so it doesn't follow this path so it, at some point actually it is not absolutely integrable over a region a region of a period of time it goes it tends to infinity and we don't want that right any signal that we're dealing with we don't want it to test to infinity in a random fashion like that it has to be periodic i have a definite defined pattern over a range it has to repeat itself right if you look at this signal it is repeating itself right so let's look at the third condition the third condition which is the last condition right it says that the periodic signal should have what a finite number of discontinuities i mean turns on off on off on off not like on off off on on off 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 on off i mean kind of random we don't want that we want it to have a finite number of discontinuity over a period of time we get at this signal at this point here we kind of we say it's at off state zero it jumps to like one right which is we assume that it is a value any value then right it goes down to zero it stays in zero goes back to that value and keeps going right that's what it does here it's kind of going you go here kind of like this right it's kind of at some point like zero to one then it stays at zero to one you know it's kind of finite looking at this this signal you see we have some value here which change it doesn't seem constant if we zoom well we can see that the weight here and height is quite different from the width here and height here so it's kind of tends to infinity so that's how it keep going it keep going it's going to uh, to some point that you even i know that the signal there right so such kind of signal doesn't have a final discontinuity right it's changing in a random fashion we don't want that right that's the third one so in summary we say that what the directly condition are three right the first one is that there's a finite number of maximum and minimum over the range of period of time right and secondly is that there must be a finite number of discontinuity over the range of time and lastly it must be absolutely integrable over the range of time of the concept about the richlet conditions i have demystified like i said it's quite easier just for you to kind of you know understand the concept and for you memorize it good luck if you have any questions feel free to you know share it in the comment section below and i'll be there to answer thanks